All right. I mentioned the uh, Archbishop Joseph Newman of Kansas City issuing a statement uh, that similar to Archbishop Samuel Aquila of Denver critiquing Cardinal Robert McElroy's recent call for radical inclusion, a call that includes a change in the church teachings. See, this is what we, he didn't say, but it really is. Call him out. It's root, that's rooted in the New Testament. An inclusion from Holy Communion for those who have not repented of grave sins against the Sixth Commandment. He said it well. You see, these folks, unfortunately, I, I'm going to call him a modernist, whether he knows it or not. McElroy is a modernist because he's compromising these teachings. Now, the effect of the tradition that all sexual acts outside of marriage constitute objectively grave sin has been the focus of the church, Christian moral life disproportionately upon sexual activity, the San Diego Cardinal wrote, which I just read to you. See, he says, sexual activity, while profound, does not lie in the heart of the hierarchy of truths. Really? Yet in a pastoral practice, we have placed it at the very center of the structure of inclusion from the Eucharist. He said this should change. This is the same Cardinal when he was the Bishop of San Diego it said abortion shouldn't be our number one topic for at the bishop's conference. He got shouted down. So you can see where he's been consistently wrong. The archbishop says, I've been saddened that in the preparation for the Senate on Senatality, there has been a renewed effort by some of the church leaders <clears throat> to confuse us in our moral human sexuality. Archbishop Newman wrote in an archdiocesan newspaper column, said the German... Senator Lewey is a striking example. The leadership of the German Bishops' Conference has rejected corrections from Pope Francis. Yeah, they said, you know, no, we're not going to listen to you. Most troubling has been the statements by Cardinal Jean Hollerich of Luxembourg. <clears throat> this is a sad statement. I mean, wow. He asserts that the church teachings relating to homosexuality is false because he believes the sociological, scientific foundation of this teaching is no longer correct. He continued, wow, can you imagine a cardinal saying this? Cardinal Hollerich's statements are particularly concerning because of the leadership role that he's been assigned as regulator of the general for the Senate on Senatality. The foxes are in charge of the chicken coop. Man, this is a serious error this man is saying. And you know, he's the same bishop or cardinal who was in Chicago when we played the clip on the Terry and Jesse show months ago where he didn't think sodomy is an immoral thing. And he told one of the guys when he asked him on it, what do you think? Well, the Bible's not correct anymore. See, what he needs to do is retire. Do us a favor. Because if you're not going to be faithful to the mandate that Jesus Christ taught, to teach, govern, and sanctify, sit down. As lay people, we want the truth. We don't want your personal opinion. So the Kansas City prelate continued. He said, most recently, Cardinal Robert McElroy's article in the Jesuit journal America Magazine has charged that the Catholic Church contains structural and cultural inclusions that alienate all too many from the church or make their journey in the Catholic faith tremendously burdensome. Cardinal McElroy champions what he terms radical inclusion that embraces everyone into full communion with the church. And here's the key on their terms. Do you see the error in that folks on Jesus's terms? No, <clears throat> it's on my terms. If I think I got the truth, I have the truth. It's moral relativism. He, the archbishop says, <clears throat> the mandate of Jesus given to his apostles to make disciples of all nations, nations is constructed to mean to enlarge the tent of the church by accommodating behaviors contrary to our Lord's own teaching. Garbage! Bishop uh, the Cardinal McElroy appears to believe that the church for 2,000 years has exaggerated the importance of her sexual moral teachings and that radical inclusion supersedes doctrinal fidelity 
especially in the area of the church moral teachings regarding human sexuality. Thank you, Archbishop, for pointing that out. The Cardinal, unfortunately, is giving his personal opinion, which he should not be giving. He should be giving the mind of Christ as the Archbishop is doing it. He says, my thought on this is that uh, this is a, uh, he says, a serious and danger, dangerous error. Now, for a prelate to say that to another prelate kind of reminds me of the Akita revelations, Our Lady of Akita in Japan, saying that bishops would be going at each other soon. And boy, we got that right now. So he's a proponent of radical inclusion sites, Our Lord's Association with Sinners. See, here's the problem. They don't read the Bible. Jesus calls sinners to repent. Have you ever heard the term repent and believe in the gospel? Well, we're going to hear that at Lent. See, we got to have the fundamentals down. In the face of this harsh criticism of religious leaders, it's true that Jesus manifested great concern, compassion, and mercy to sinners. In every instance, Jesus also calls those who wish to become his disciples to repentance, you think, and conversion. Are we to understand our Lord's call for repentance to fostering a culture of inclusion? That's a good question to ask the cardinal. Was the clear and challenging teaching of Jesus regarding marriage or the consequences of lust intended to alienate or was it an invitation to liberation or freedom? Great question. You're not kidding. Was radical inclusion our Lord's highest priority? No. When many disciples walked away from the bread of life discourse, which I mentioned earlier on John 6, see how important he's asking great questions to the cardinal. He says, in listening to those on, the, uh, on this situation, we should include, uh, include hearing the pain and suffering of adult children, of divorced young people raised without the presence of a loving father. Those addicted to a tender age to pornography and those emotional scarred by hookup culture. See how other people have sin, think, sinful things in their life? Do we just disregard it? No, we call them to repent and believe in the gospel. If we are truly listening to the Holy Spirit, the Archbishop says, I'm confident that it will not lead us to abandon our moral teaching in order to embrace, and I like what he says, a toxic spirit of an age of oppression by the dictatorship of moral relativism. Here, here, Archbishop, thank you so much for saying all of the above. 